The story of the United States has been written for centuries. Penned by millions of authors, written in every language, from every perspective. With every chapter as unique as our people and our land. Our story is one made up of many. Find yours in the USA. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, we see champions everywhere we look. In every sport, on every court, we're building a foundation to ensure all athletes are safe, supported, and strengthened. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, ending abuse is not just our job. It's our promise. A truck is a tool, but a ram, a ram is life. Yeah, it's the wipe the sweat off your brow sort of life. But it's also the let's load up the ATV's life. The my kids play way too many sports life. The let's find a secret spot to fish life. That looks nice. Innovations, comforts, and powertrains built to power all the lives you live. Ram.
Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. See, Smokey thinks I'm funny. I got involved in officiating volleyball eight years after I played Division I in college. Saying yes to volleyball officiating will give you the privilege to be a part of one of the most exciting sports around. I'm a speaker. A builder. I coach. Culinary arts. Auditor. A firefighter. For anyone contemplating becoming a volleyball official. Just go for it. Take the plunge. Open the door. Say yes to officiating. Learn more about how to get involved at sayyestoofficiating.com. The rhythmic sound of more than 500 cascading waterfalls. The endless echo of more than 10,000 caves. The serene silence of a thousand miles of wilderness trails. The next time someone tells you to get lost, consider it an opportunity. Your vacation is now playing in Tennessee. Southeast Sports Network, your free ticket to front row sports action. From heart-pounding football showdowns to thrilling basketball games, experience every moment live. All from the comfort of your home. Your favorite athletes, broadcast in real time and on demand. It's not just streaming, it's your front row ticket to the best of Southeastern sports. And the best part? It's absolutely free. Don't miss a moment of your favorite teams. Join us now at the Southeast Sports Network. The Southeast Sports Network, your front row ticket to live sports. Welcome to the campus of Reinhardt University College Basketball today on the Southeast Sports Network. On the road, Truett McConnell's Bears doing battle with the Eagles of Reinhardt University. Two great teams. Truett McConnell, four and six in conference play. Reinhardt University Eagles threatening to break into the top 25 in the nation. They're 14 and 0 this season. I'm Gabriel Shry here alongside me, Lorenzo Robinson, bringing you all the action. Lorenzo, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. This is going to be my first game for this season, and it's going to be a pleasure to be able to watch a very talented Reinhardt Eagle team go to battle today. Yeah, two really good programs and excited to see what they bring to the hardwood today. Obviously, two different directions this season for these two teams. Truett McConnell not quite having as much success as Reinhardt University. Let's take a look and get to know the Bears. Truett McConnell, 4-11 and 11 overall, 2-4 and four on the road. They're shooting well from the floor, though, 36%. It just hasn't been enough for them to win games. Absolutely. It's something that when you talk about a team that has struggled so far this season, especially playing in an uphill battle, going up against a team that has not lost a game, you really want to be able to get off to a fast start and shoot the ball well and get up and down the floor and really put some pressure on the Eagles in the early going. On the other side, Reinhardt University, 14-0 overall. They've won seven of those at home. 46% shooting from the floor this season, which is unreal. I mean, that's crazy. And averaging nearly 84 points per game. Two players to watch. First up for the Bears, we're going to keep an eye on Alexis Brewster. Last time out, 22 points, went 5 for 7 from the floor, hit a three ball, and did really well at the line also. She's really the superstar for this team. Absolutely. She's also been their most consistent player, averaging just a shade under 17 points a game. They're 
they're going to look for her early and often. They're going to be able to come away with a win in this one. And this won't come as a surprise to you at all, but our player to watch today for Reinhardt University, Sanchez Ponce. 16 points per game, eight rebounds, 61% field goal shooting. I mean, she's been unreal. Absolutely. And this has just been a natural progression from her last season, kind of being that first person off of the bench, providing the Eagles with a lot of energy. And this year, she has taken on the lead role. We're going to pause for the playing of the American National Anthem. And as we introduce the starting lineups and do that, we'll take a break as well. College basketball will be right back on the Southeast Sports Network. My character, Shazam, knows all about growing up in a family full of teenage superheroes. They're bold. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Adventurous. Shazam! There's never a dull moment. And no matter what happens, they'll always have your back. All they need is a place to grow and be themselves. And the best part is, you don't have to be a superhero to adopt a teen. Learn more about adopting a teen from foster care. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward. Welcome back on the Southeast Sports Network. It's college basketball. Truett McConnell's Bears on the road battling the Eagles of Reinhardt University. Right now we're meeting the starting lineups. Thanks for being with us on the Southeast Sports Network. Gabriel Shry here alongside Lorenzo Robinson. Lorenzo's a student at Reinhardt University, so thanks for being with me this afternoon. Absolutely. It's definitely a pleasure to be here as well. Just having an opportunity to watch one of our great sports programs, our women's basketball team, of course, being undefeated on the season, having an opportunity to watch them perform up close. Just seconds away from getting started here between these two programs, there's a lot of different ways you can take a look at this, but that, that record, unstoppable Reinhardt University Eagles, 14-0. They've toppled a few top 25 teams already. They're knocking on the door. It's looking like they'll be a top 25 team with the next iteration of the poll. Any thoughts on them and, and how the Bears might be able to slow them down right before tip here? Well, one of the main things that Reinhardt has done a really good job of this season so far, they've scored the ball at an excellent clip so far, first in the conference in points per game, but they've also defended at a high level as well, also first in steals per game. So being able to get those steals and turn the opposing team over, leading to easy offense, that has definitely been a key for the Reinhardt Eagles so far this year. And there's our opening tip. One away by the Eagles of Reinhardt University. They'll work with the Orange first. Julia Kraft has been a lot of fun to watch play this season. The senior from Canton, Georgia. Feels like she's so electric as this shot is off the mark for Preston. And Wanda Preston, we're seeing her go to the basket there. But she has also been 
probably the team's top playmaker this year, so expect her to be trusted to have the ball and make decisions for the Eagles this evening. Ball sails over the baseline. It'll stay with the Bears of Truett McConnell. And an early post touch for Alexis Brewster. Expect to see that early and often, especially with the type of year that she's had. And this is our player to watch who goes to work in the low block and the whistle. Good season so far for the true freshman out of Marietta, Georgia, Alexis Brewster. Six foot tall, that height is a huge advantage. She shot 50% from the hardwood this season, 16 and a half points per game as well. Absolutely, one of the more dominant forces in the conference so far this year. Ninth in the conference in points per game. Also 11th in rebounds per game. She's going to be someone that's going to be a tough task for the Eagles to stop in this game. 2-0, Bears take an early lead. Here come the Eagles of Reinhardt University to respond. Led up the floor by Ivana Preston, the senior from Jonesboro. Around the arc. Looking inside, Sanchez Ponce. Basketball's on the floor and a tussle for it. That's a jump ball. And two nice early stops for Truett McConnell. That's something that they're going to have to do if they want to pull off the upset in tonight's showdown. Back to the offensive end. Bears pass inside is loose. Picked up by the Eagles of Reinhardt University. Driving up the floor and the whistle as she takes this inside. And already we're seeing a little bit of what the Eagles have been good at so far this year, being able to get a steal and be able to turn that into fast break opportunity. Sanchez Ponce drawing the foul. She goes to the line at the charity stripe this season, 61%. First one rattles around and goes, and she's really one of the very best in the Appalachian Athletic Conference. 15 and a half points per game. Eight rebounds per game, as you saw during our pregame coverage. It feels like she can do no wrong. Absolutely. And Sanchez Ponce is still just a sophomore, so someone that the Eagles will be looking to have a part of their program and as a mainstay for their program for years to come. Brewster gave it off. Here's the three from the wing. It skiffs off the iron, boarded initially by the Bears as the whistle sounds. She took a step trying to get through traffic. Ava Queen, the true freshman from Blue Ridge. Queen's contributed pretty consistently so far in this season, at least three or four points per game. Here come the Eagles. Sanchez Ponce trying to go inside, jump ball. And with the way that Sanchez Ponce has performed this season, it's truly going to be a team effort to be able to slow her down for the Bears. Great pass into play, unable to capitalize initially, and Gibson off the mark. Boarded, gathered up by Lovejoy, the sophomore from Dallas. Far side, Bears, entry pass down alongside the post. Brewster going to work, fighting her way towards the glass, and this one comes up short. Obviously, our two players to watch. It will be a very fun matchup with them going against each other on both ends. Woodruff pulls off a nice layup. Bears back towards the offensive end. It's 4-2, Reinhardt University lead. Already seen one lead change. Bears will inbound from the far side. It's Destiny Lovejoy. Five foot eight sophomore, this is intercepted and the Eagles go the distance. A little kiss off the glass for Ashley Woodruff. The 5'5 graduate student extends the lead of Reinhardt University. And that is something that Chua McConnell can ill afford to happen. They cannot allow the Eagles to be able to turn their turnovers into easy offense. Reinhardt University coming back up the floor. 7.20 left to go in this first period. Sanchez Ponce pulls up, this one off the mark. Just a bit wide on her. An unforced error there for the Eagles. Chua McConnell now looking to try to get back on the board. This one escapes the floor. It's hiding behind us here somewhere. Put 
Back onto the floor with care by Kaylee Kelly, another true freshman. Tons of true freshmen on this Truett McConnell roster this season. So that's something that's a disadvantage right now, but think about how great they're going to be in a few years. Absolutely. This is something that they're going to be able to build on, especially if they're able to pull off an upset against a team like Reinhardt that has been so good all season long, hopefully giving them a little bit of confidence as this year progresses. Three ball doesn't quite drop for Truett McConnell, so it's a four-point game still with six and a half to go in the first. Out with pass, Preston, far side to Kraft. Kept on the floor, up near the straightaway. Sanchez Ponce, back to her. She pulls up from the corner. This takes a big high bounce and taken in by the Bears. Truett McConnell struggling to get up the floor. Sydney Smith, the senior from Buford. To the far side. Kate Reed, the true freshman. Driving on Sanchez Ponce, wants the layup and second chance won't go either. Troy McConnell, a few consecutive empty possessions, a few good looks at the rim as well. And if you're gonna beat a team that has been as good as Reinhardt, you need to convert on those opportunities. Wow, beautiful three by Ashley Woodruff. And that's what she specialized in this season. 14 for 42 from beyond the arc, 33%. She's 45% from the floor and averaging 12 and a half points per game this year for Reinhardt University. Yes, sir, definitely a part of the Reinhardt Eagles game plan. One of the better three-point shooting teams in the conference, shooting 35.2% from three. An improvement from where they were a season ago, which was 30.2%. So you can tell that there's been a huge point of emphasis for them with improving beyond the arc and seeing it at work there with Ashley Woodruff knocking down a three-pointer. Just a reminder, you can visit our website anytime to watch free live sports from the Southeast, sesnsports.com, and be sure to get linked up with us on social media. We're everywhere. We're on threads, TikTok, Twitter, you name it, or X, whatever, at <laughs> SESN Sports. Be sure to link up with us. Back underway just like that here in Waleska, Georgia. College basketball on the Southeast Sports Network. Gabriel Shry here with Lorenzo Robinson. Appreciate you tuning in and being along for the ride. Bears flip this outside. Right now it's a seven point game. TMU in some trouble. Kelly trying to pass it inside in the intercept. Woodruff who just hit that big three. Close side to Ty Williams. Now to the corner. Sanchez Ponce knocks one down. Beautiful three ball. And despite being listed as a forward, Sanchez Ponce very comfortable pulling up from beyond the arc. Averaging just a shade under three three-point attempts per game. Shooting it at a clip of 44%. Definitely one of the better shooters on this team. Pulling up TMU. Can't hit the three from the straightaway. Dobbs, the senior from Covington, thought she had a look, just couldn't quite get that to go. Here's Reinhardt for the response. Are you kidding me? Again, Ashley Woodruff, 5'5 five -five graduate guard from Flowery Branch, Georgia. She has made a name for herself in the AAC. Stepping into those three-point shots with confidence, her percentage may be a little bit lower than a shooter of her caliber would like, but definitely a very confident shooter for the Eagles. Driving inside, Bears can't get this. Boarded by Sanchez Ponce. Four minutes left to go in the first as a big collision down in front of the Bears bench. Chua McConnell has had more than a few point blank opportunities near the goal to be able to get themselves on the board and stop this Reinhardt run, but they have just been unable to fall. Yeah, and this Reinhardt run didn't seem like a run for quite some time, but all of a sudden it's turned into a 15-0 run to start the game in favor of Reinhardt's Eagles. That's quite the run, 15 straight points. And it can happen just that fast for this team. We've seen it time and time again. It seems like a team is in the game, hanging around, and then all of a sudden they're going out on a massive run. True McConnell Bears put this back on the floor. Sydney Smith walking it up. 5'6 senior from Buford. From the wing, entry pass. Nice take off the glass, but this won't drop. 
That was a great look for Dobbs, just couldn't get it to go. Absolutely, and that's been the story of this first quarter for True and McConnell. A few really good looks at the rim, but they just have not been able to get them to fall. Reinhardt driving, this one's off the mark. A little bit of trouble again. Firing a shot off the side of the backboard, Gibson fighting for it. This is tied up down in the low paint. You good? Hey, you good, Gosling? Despite Reinhardt not being able to come away with points on that possession, you have to really like the persistence that they show, getting about three offensive rebounds and in one single possession, just really playing hard out there. And that has been something that we've seen from them throughout this season. They're going to work harder than their opponent, and Troy McConnell has to match that energy if they're going to have a chance to win this one. Swatted away, Reinhardt comes down to the board. Eagles to the offensive end of the floor. RU pulls up from range, this one's short. Boarded. Kate Reed up the floor, connected with Smith. She flips it back, Dobbs from the straightaway, and again, short. She likes that spot, just can't get it to go. Absolutely, and one of the players that their coach is very fond of for taking that shot, unfortunately not able to get it to go there. Reinhardt unable to score on another trip up the floor, but they're on a 15-0 run. Will be interesting to see what True and McConnell will do here. Great pass down inside, and Dobbs wide open, able to take that to the rack, drops it in off the glass, and cuts that 15-0 run. A look that was very similar to some of the other looks that they've had so far in this game, this time being able to get one to go. Miscommunication on the floor. Coach Campbell looking for a screen there and didn't get it. Yes, and that's another unforced error for the Reinhardt Eagles. And as a team that is 14 and 0, things are going really well. But when you look big picture, a team that is trying to make some noise in the national championship tournament, those are the unforced errors that they cannot have if they're going to really be a team that can be reckoned with on a national scale. Reinhardt University is certainly seeking that national ranking. I'm surprised they're not already in the top 25. I think they will be with the next iteration of the poll. Absolutely, and the polls taking a bit of a break. The last poll coming out, I believe, December 17th, so the next one will come out within the next few weeks. And as long as the Eagles take care of business in this one, you'll be sure to find their names in there somewhere in that top 25. Destiny Lovejoy gets hit with a whistle, so the ball goes back to Reinhardt University. Brewster trying to establish post positioning there. Preston hands it off. Here's Sanchez Ponce, flips it out from the elbow. Simpson down inside, this rattles and goes. Reinhardt makes it 17-4 with 80 seconds to go in the first. Tremendous pass there by Simpson, finding Sanchez Ponce all alone underneath the goal. And that is what Troy McConnell cannot have. They cannot allow the Eagles to get into their offensive sets with regularity and comfort. They need to make things difficult. Brewster, blockered away, gathered up by Simpson. She goes far side over to Preston. Sanchez Ponce to the corner, and the three is short. Picked up by Lovejoy. She goes to the far side to Stewart, true freshman. Truett McConnell maintaining possession on the wing. A bit of danger for TMU, and the whistle goes as she takes a step, trying to escape from the defense of Ivana Preston. She has just shut down this afternoon. Absolutely, Ivana Preston, one of the better defenders in the AAC, as well as the better playmakers. Definitely somebody that coach is going to be willing to put on the primary ball handler and muck things up for them. Sean McConnell's offense so far has been so stagnant in this one. You would like to see them try to get some more movement and try to find some open shooters. Who's the next one? Reinhardt trying to take this inside, stripped away. TMU long feet up the floor to Kate Reed, and this one is lost as everyone's fired up about that. 
And that right there, that is what the Bears need to do. They need to be able to get some stops, create some turnovers, and find some easy baskets because this Reinhardt Eagle defense is not going to make anything easy in the half court. First one rims out for the Bears. Kate Reed at the stripe. True freshman, she is local to the area. She's out of Dalton, Georgia. I almost forgot, this is an interstate matchup here, isn't it? Clinton, absolutely, Georgia. absolutely. Long pass up the floor to Ty Williams, who comes up short as the first period is in the books. So one quarter done, and so far, all Reinhardt University. In fact, that first period was basically just a 17-4 run in favor of the Eagles. We'll take a break with them and be back with more college basketball in just a moment on the Southeast Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. States has been written for centuries, penned by millions of authors, written in every language, from every perspective, with every chapter as unique as our people and our land. Our story is one made up of many. Find yours in the USA. Welcome back to the campus of Reinhardt University College Basketball on the Southeast Sports Network. One period in the books, and the first period was basically just a 17-4 run in favor of Reinhardt's Eagles. Reinhardt University starting this second period with the ball, pulling up for three, and it comes up short. Boarded by Kate Reed, she hands it off. Stewart running the floor. Won't keep it for long herself. On the wing, a lot of pressure for the Bears. TMU up to the straightaway. Entry pass to Dobbs. She's double teamed as she turns around and she took an extra step. And that's an error we've seen them made a couple of times already tonight. Absolutely, and Troy McConnell, that is something that you cannot have happen, especially as a team that's coming in without a lot of momentum, going against a team that's undefeated. You really need to cut down on those turnovers and take advantage of your opportunities. They've had a chance to score underneath the goal a few times, whether it's a turnover or uh, unforced error, or just not being able to connect on those opportunities. They have just struggled so far at making do around the rim. Julia Kraft across the floor, hooked up with Preston, now from the corner for three. Just short on that look. And that's what we would call a bit of a heat check from Woodruff going two for two in that first quarter. Just wanted to see if she still had the hot hand. Man, if she'd hit that, that heat check checked. Absolutely. <laughs> Very hot. <laughs> <laughs> Dobbs has it swatted away initially and regathers. Marley Townley defensively a nightmare right here as she gets a hand in the face of Kate Reed, who's unfazed. The true freshman buries a three. That's a big time shot for Truett McConnell. Kate Reed is just. She has not shot the three ball well percentage wise, but she is unafraid. She's going to get a lot of attempts up. And she's definitely a very capable shooter as we saw just now. Three nothing run to start the second period. We'll see if they can string together a couple of buckets here. 17-7, a 10 point game. 90 seconds off the clock in period two. Layup is short, not enough on it. And Lovejoy gets the whistle. One thing that you really want to see Chua McConnell do, especially with the struggles that they've had to score on Reinhardt in the half court, you want to see them kind of push the pace a little bit. We saw them get a few easy opportunities at the rim in that first quarter just by creating turnovers and pushing the pace and getting the ball up court fast. 
Timeout down on the floor. Yeah, it feels like Truett McConnell is struggling to get traction to me. You know, they, they did just hit that three. Now you've got to capitalize on that. You've got to come back up the floor and do something to feel good about. Sometimes in a game like basketball, you just need a little bit of momentum swinging your way. It's such a game of runs in the first place, and, and to be able to hit a couple of shots right now would do the Bears a ton of justice. And the main thing that you want to do, you don't want to get too high, you don't want to get too low, you don't want to get yourself into a hole where the emotion and the feeling around the team is just another here we go again type of moment, right? You want to see them be able to have some things to build on and some things that will keep their confidence up so then when it's time for them to make their run, they're going to be able to have an opportunity to make things happen and really put some pressure on the home team. First shot's a bit short. Love Joy at the stripe. 64% at the line this season as she hits her second. Makes it a nine point game, 8.22 left in this first half. Great entry pass for the Eagles and Sanchez Ponce, too much on it. Bears Dobbs gets the board. Able to finesse her way out of there. Stewart, the true freshman up the floor, back to Dobbs. She wants it from the straightaway, and again, just a bit short. Three times from that spot, we've seen that. Yes, but that's more of like what you want to see from Truett McConnell, right? You want to see them kind of push that pace a little bit, getting an open shot on the secondary break. Sanchez Ponce hits a beautiful three. That makes it a 12-point game again. 20 to eight. Reinhardt University bringing the heat in their home gymnasium. Sanchez Ponce with a steal. She's free up the floor for the layup with a little kiss off the glass. It's 22-8 Eagles. And that's another steal leading the easy offense for Reinhardt. Reinhardt very good in the half court as an offensive team, but where their bread is buttered is being able to turn the opposing team over and get those easy looks in transition. Of course, Troy McConnell, a team that only averages 8.9 assists per game. So a lot of their offense comes by way of one-on-one -on -one chances and opportunities. You do wonder if the Eagles forcing them to pass the ball a little bit more is leading to more turnovers. Another steal by Sanchez Ponce, and she's fouled intentionally as she takes it down inside. <laughs> I'm not really quite sure about that one. Looked a little bit like a continuation opportunity there for Sanchez Ponce. Of course, as the saying goes, the ref is always right. Reinhardt inbounds, back to Sanchez. Ponce, who cleans it up. 24 to eight. Big lead for the Eagles of Reinhardt University on their home floor. Three minutes gone in the second period as Dobbs comes close side. Smith down low, back to Dobbs. She can't finish and boarded by Reinhardt's Ty Williams. Chua McConnell, they're getting into their offense a lot faster in this quarter, but they have just not been able to create any consistent opportunities. Wow, Ty Williams gets the board, the 5'6 graduate student from Macon, takes the ball, drains the three, and just like that, a 19-point lead for Reinhardt University. They have been unstoppable through two periods of play in Brown Athletic Center. A really good timeout there for Chua McConnell as they are now on the ropes here in the second quarter. On the ropes is right. What do you do to come back from a deficit like this so early? What are you saying to your program? Is this is this a situation where you turn it into a learning situation? Is it way too early to be worried about a, a score margin like that, or is it a sign of things to come if you're the head coach? Well, for Troy McConnell, in terms of the margin right now, you can't think of it as a, we have to make a 19-point play. Of course, in basketball, there are no 19-point plays, right? So it's doing a little bit at a time, taking it possession by possession. See if you can get into your offense quick and get an easy bucket. Then see if you can get a stop. And then telling your team, just focus on each possession and hopefully stringing those together. And that will create a much more manageable deficit for your team going into half. Kelly inbounds for the Bears of Truett McConnell. They trail by 19, Sidney Smith. On the wing, defended by Williams, sent it up to Kate Reed. 
Outlet pass nearly intercepted by Sanchez Ponce. Kept alive, Smith to the corner. Kelly wants to pull up and this will go back to Reinhardt. She took a step. Reinhardt's perimeter defense has just been swarming so far in this game. There is no room for Truett McConnell to make any plays along the perimeter. Again, a team not used to getting a lot of assists, used to being able to capitalize on one-on-one -on -one chances. Reinhardt making it difficult for them. Reinhardt pulls up, going for the board on her own miss. Dobbs gets it away from her. Four members of this Bear roster are truly, truly local products within an hour's drive of the gymnasium. A bit of a homecoming for them of sorts here at Reinhardt University. Swatted away, stolen by Kate Reed and the Bears. Kaylee Kelly from Calhoun, Georgia, back to Smith. The former Yellow Jacket down inside to Dobbs, who gets it off the glass and one. And you can see a little bit of a yelp there from Elise Dobbs, letting off a little bit of steam, a bit of frustration. It has just not been her night so far. She's had a few really good looks at the rim and from three right there, being able to capitalize and get Chua McConnell back on the board to stop the bleeding a little bit for the Bears. Yeah, Dobbs usually hits about a third of all of her looks from beyond the arc, so unusual to see her over at range and struggling to hit shots at all. But if you're the coach for Truro McConnell, you hope that that is the start of something special for your team, hopefully being able to build off of that and create a bit of a run. Sydney Smith swats this, and off the floor, last touched by Ty Williams. That was a good stop for the Bears. We'll see if they will be able to keep the ball rolling here on this offensive possession. But things Stewart. have just been so difficult for them against this Reinhardt defense. It's really been tough sledding for Truett McConnell. Kelly pulls up and she's just a bit short on the mid-range J. Now Ty Williams has a ton of space and time. Stops on the wing, Kraft working with it. Far side, Sanchez Ponce wants three and it skiffs off the iron to Dobbs. Smith up near the straightaway. Pass to the far side and the intercept by Ashley Woodruff. She loses it back to the Bears and Stewart, the true freshman. Close side to Stewart. Product of Buford, Georgia, the handoff to Kelly. Smith down to the corner, looking for that entry pass. Dobbs hangs on to it, the turnaround, Jay goes. And Dobbs, a quick five points there for Chua McConnell, going on her own personal 5-0 run. And you can see her confidence is starting to raise a little bit. She's getting a little bit more involved in the game, and any time you're able to See if you go down and we'll make you play harder on both ends of the floor. True McConnell outscoring the Eagles by five in this second period. They were trailing by 19 after one. Trailing by 14 at the moment. Bears get it away. This is Smith. 345 left in the first half. Close side to Kelly. She's back to her. Looks down low. Dobbs pulls up from the line and it skiffs off the front. But already you can see the energy shift that Chua McConnell has gone under in this quarter. They're playing a lot harder defensively and that's led to a few more good looks on the offensive end. Floated to the corner, Kelly pulls up looking for three and it's too short. And a bit of a quick trigger there for Chua McConnell. You would like to see them continue to get the ball in close. Maybe see if you can get another post touch for Dobbs who's been really good in this second quarter. That's another player who's been unusually inefficient tonight for Truett McConnell. Kaylee Kelly this season, again, she's a true freshman and a Calhoun, if you didn't catch that earlier. 40% from the floor, played in 12 games for the Bears, 37% from three-point land. So to see her miss a couple in a row on trips up the floor like that is really odd. Yes, but a part of that can also be a credit to the defense that Reinhardt has been able to play so far in this one. Well, I think Reinhardt's defense is so locked down that sometimes they don't even have to necessarily be playing defense actively. They just get in your head before you're even in the gym. Absolutely, and when it's so difficult to get open, usually it's just such a surprise when you finally pop open. It's like, wow, and then you end up rushing the shot or it's just a little bit off. So that's something that Chua McConnell will have to come back if they're going to be able to make some headway into this lead. 
Brewster near the elbow, outside. Here's one from the straightaway, and it pops off the front. Kelly cleans it up, but can't get it to drop. A third chance and the foul. And again, there's just been a huge shift in the energy for Troy McConnell so far in this second quarter. A few offensive rebounds on that possession. How many times in that first quarter did we see True and McConnell miss a shot and go one and done? Now they're crashing the glass, being more active on both ends, creating turnovers and creating second chance opportunities for themselves on the other end. Blaylock and Kate Reed check in for their respective programs. Trio Blaylock, a true freshman out of Tiger, Georgia, played at Raven County High School. Kate Reed again is that true freshman from Dalton. 5'9", really efficient this season for the Bears. And one of a host of true freshmen again for a very young Truett McConnell team. Here's one from the corner for Blaylock and it's wide. Stewart will run the floor, calling out to her teammates. The Bears are set. Brewster far side. She just pulls up and it's wide. I'm not really sure if I'm the coach, if I really like that. I see if I want to get a few more passes around, see if I can get a post touch for Alexis Brewster. Not really a great look there. Woodruff off the mark, cleaned up by who else? Marley Townley. She has been hot of late. Dawson County High School product. Seems like she can do no wrong in the second half of this season. Yes, sir, and when you make it, Mistake against a team like Reinhardt, a bad shot, a turnover. More often than not, they're going to be able to capitalize and put pressure on you going back towards your goal. Firing on the run, Brewster regathers. This one is loose. Drew McConnell will keep the ball. Brewster again, driving it on Townley. Shots off the mark, and it's off the floor. Speaking of doing no wrong in the second half of the season, second quarter, it really feels like the Bears have done no wrong. They've been way better in this second period, and if they can get a little momentum going into the half, they could be dangerous. And a huge credit for that can go to Elise Dobbs. Dobbs going on her own personal 5-0 run earlier in this quarter, kind of getting the ball rolling and getting the momentum started for the Bears, and then their energy has just definitely picked up. Diving for loose balls, going for offensive rebounds, getting them to their sets faster. And even there, Alexis Brewster, even though she's been struggling, she hasn't been able to find much offensively, demanding the ball, getting into her action quick, and then creating more second chance opportunities for the Bears. This one rattles out. 29-15, Reinhardt a 14 point lead, 60 seconds left in the half. Playlock heavily defended, passes it away from Kate Reed, Williams drives. Inside to Townley, she's double teamed and takes a hand. Brewster and Kelly are just too much to break through. It's really unbelievable that Alexis Brewster is a true freshman. She's out of Marietta, Georgia, not far from here either. Truly a local product in my mind. And I, I spotlighted her as our player to watch. 50% from the floor this season, which is unreal. I don't care what level or position you're playing. You're hitting half your shots. Almost 17 points per game, and she's a true freshman. That's wild. And that's someone that the... Fans of the Bears are going to be hoping to hear a lot of as the years go on. Just being a true freshman, having that kind of pressure on yourself to be able to succeed so early into your career. But that can also build you up as your career goes on, too. It will make you feel a lot more confident in yourself and in your capabilities. Townley, that's off the mark. She's been about 53% at the line this season. Only two to her percentage is there going one for two at the line. Kelly over to Brewster. Outside. Queen gave it off. Now back to her. Entry pass to Brewster is swatted away by Townley. Good play defensively. She's bringing a lot of hustle. I've already harped a little bit on how great she's been the second half of this year. Reinhardt's forwards have really made it difficult for Brewster. Great pass, great look, and well drawn up play for the true freshman out of Blue Ridge. Ava Queen gets that to go off the glass. It's a 13 point game. And all of a sudden, True McConnell, right when it seemed like they were going to get blown out of the water, being able to just hang around. And usually, when you're the team that's 
trying to upset a heavily favored opponent. You just want to be able to have a chance going into the second half. Oh, Blaylock knocks down a gorgeous three from the corner. New shot for there for Reinhardt to kind of quell that momentum for Truett McConnell. And pass up to the straightaway. Doesn't make it in time as we've reached the halftime break. What a first half of action. Two quarters in the book after two. It's 33-17. Reinhardt advantage. Any thoughts from you on that first half? Well, Truett McConnell starting off a little bit timid in that first quarter. You could tell they were a little bit intimidated by a 14-0 opponent, a team in Reinhardt that has been so good all season long, especially a team that they lost to earlier this year, 89-71. But when they went down 27-8, something happened. And in that timeout, you could tell that they came out with a different intent and a different intensity, led by Elise Dobbs going on her own personal 5-0 run and really picking up their activity level. And they're going to need a lot more of that if they're going to come away with an upset victory here in Waleska, Georgia. Yeah, Reinhardt outscored the Bears 17-4 in the first period. And that second period really neck and neck, 33-17 at the end of it all. Just about 15 points for each program. So we'll take a break with these two teams and be back with a second half of action in just a moment on the Southeast Sports Network. More college basketball coming up. Don't go anywhere. Get the message of your company here. And get your message here. All while supporting local student athletes. Reach out today to get started. Shrine Media. Find us at shrimedia.com. vacation is now playing in Tennessee. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people it is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation.
ready to reconnect, to discover, to explore a Georgia that always has more stories to share and views to admire. Set for your next adventure while you set your own pace to wonder or wander or whatever it is that makes you feel you. To feel that Georgia feeling, those beautiful, real, honest moments. The only found in Georgia moments. Find yours at exploregeorgia.org. My character, Shazam, knows all about growing up in a family full of teenage superheroes. They're bold. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Adventurous. Shazam! There's never a dull moment. And no matter what happens, they'll always have your back. All they need is a place to grow and be themselves. And the best part is, you don't have to be a superhero to adopt a teen. Learn more about adopting a teen from foster care. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward. Southeast Sports Network, your free ticket to front row sports action. From heart-pounding football showdowns to thrilling basketball games, experience every moment live. All from the comfort of your home. Your favorite athletes, broadcast in real time and on demand. It's not just streaming, it's your front row ticket to the best of Southeastern sports. And the best part? It's absolutely free. Don't miss a moment of your favorite teams. Join us now at the Southeast Sports Network. 
the Southeast Sports Network, your front row ticket to live sports. Welcome back to the campus of Reinhardt University. We're at the halftime break. It's 33-17 between the Bears of Truett McConnell and the Eagles of Reinhardt University. Gabriel Shry here with Lorenzo Robinson. Lorenzo, what do you think of that first half of play, and what are you expecting in the second half? What I think about the first half in that first quarter, we kind of saw more of the same for the Eagles, right? We saw them do what they do best, turning defense into offense, creating steals, creating havoc getting turnovers. And then in that second half, Troy McConnell just really made things a little bit more difficult for the Eagles. They turned up their own heat defensively. And then on the offensive side, they got into their rhythm. They got things going with a little bit more pace. And it made it really hard on Reinhardt to play the same type of defense that they played in that first quarter. It's the naked eye, the score being 33-17 would appear to be a blowout. But if you're the Troy McConnell Bears, you have to be satisfied with the way that you play, specifically in that second quarter. Despite being down by 16 points, you were down by 19 and had a chance to get a lot worse. But with your collective energy and effort, you're able to kind of hang around and hang around. And if you can get this into a single digit ball game going into the fourth quarter, all of a sudden, all of the pressure goes onto the Eagles to keep that O in their record. It definitely feels like all the pressure is on Reinhardt University right now. Truett McConnell has hung around, they've kept themselves in the game. The Bears have a chance to make something happen in this third and fourth quarter, but obviously you have to really capitalize on white whiteboard time, and Tony Campbell is a, a whiteboard genius, right? He's gonna come out with some things drawn up, some strategies. He was watching in that first half, and it'll be interesting to see who successfully capitalizes, first in the early stages, but then late as the game goes on, who's making adjustments properly. One thing that you could look to see for Truett McConnell, they're going to do a little bit more to try to get Alexis Brewster involved. So far, a game that has not been very kind to her in this one. Alexis Brewster so far 0 for 4 from the field. Her only two points coming from the free throw line. So expect to see her get a lot more touches and involved early and often into this ball game. Truett McConnell needs her in order to be able to play their brand of basketball. Yeah, she's so crucial to their success, and really, you're right, has not been involved much at all. It'll be interesting to see what adjustments they make, what they do to try and get her into the game and involved in what they're doing in this second half of play. And that's Ashley Woodruff right there, racking the balls up. True McConnell bears to the bench. The officials got the game ball. And we're about ready to get back underway from Brown Athletic Center in Waleska, Georgia. Gabriel Shry here with Lorenzo Robinson on the Southeast Sports Network, our simulcast tonight. Big thanks to our partners for carrying the game. LJ Telephone Company, thank you for carrying the game. We really appreciate it. Spreading great basketball across the Southeast here. Third period about to get underway, 33-17. Eagles lead the Bears. Reinhardt University this season is undefeated, 14-0. One of the very best in the nation and likely to be in the top 25 next round of the poll. Last poll came out on December 13th and Reinhardt was 26th in votes. Just on the outside looking in, I expect they'll be included this time around. if they can hold off the Bears here, it will be almost a given that they will be in the next iteration of the top 25. Of course, Truman McConnell looking to put a kibosh on any of those plans with a strong second half. Bears inbound first. A couple of quick passes, Kate Reed. Down across to Queen. Queen the entry pass and the intercept by Sanchez Ponce. Reinhardt up the floor, Sanchez Ponce outside, and the layup's off the mark. And obviously not an ideal start for Tour McConnell on the offensive end. 
as that was more reminiscent of what we saw in the first quarter. A quick pass leading to a turnover, another steal for the Eagles. He was looking to capitalize here. Pull up from mid-range and nothing doing. Gibson off the mark, Crafts now with it after the board. She drives and fires, this one has too much. Sanchez Ponce keeps it alive for Reinhardt University. To extend their lead, this one rattles out as well. Sanchez Ponce fights out with it, Kraft. Up to the straightaway, pressed into the far side. Eagles back to Kraft, thought she was gonna pull up. Preston with it now on the low block, off the glass, no. Stewart gives it off, Lovejoy. Sets up Brewster. I think that last trip up the floor for Reinhardt, you know, if you're a Reinhardt fan or a parent, you might be bummed about that, but if you're a coach, if you're me, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, Reinhardt has to be happy with that trip because they shot the ball six times. Absolutely, and a main thing, a main point of emphasis for Reinhardt that we've seen over the past few years has just been their activity level. Even when they aren't shooting the ball well, they're able to kind of get away with it because they're so active. They're diving for every loose ball. They're first to the ball on offensive rebounds. And that's something that can really get into the head of the opponent because it's like, man, we forced a miss, but they have another chance at it. Great backdoor pass to Sanchez Ponce who finishes it off. Ashley Woodruff takes the foul. Swatted away, balls loose through the middle of the floor. Lovejoy able to run that down. A lot some, of contact. Yes, but that's also some more of that lockdown perimeter defense that we've seen from the Eagles. And they're gonna be physical. They're not afraid to muck the game up a little bit. 35-17. Reinhardt holding the lead. Couple of fresh sets of legs onto the floor, pressed into the bench. Simpson onto the floor. She's been fun to watch play this year. Another true freshman at North Gwinnett High School. Reinhardt University, the close side, Ty Williams. Pulling up from three, and this goes Julia Kraft. Julia Kraft has been one of the better shooters on this Reinhardt team for a few seasons now. Again, knocking down a huge three for the Eagles, and all of a sudden, it's a 21-point game. Reinhardt takes it away. This is Gibson up the floor and off the glass. This goes. And defense to offense for the Eagles, so debilitating if you're a true McConnell. Just when you thought that you were getting back into the game, Reinhardt able to turn them over and create their own easy looks. Quick breakdown on the floor for these two programs. What are your thoughts so far this second half? Scoreless Bears, seven points for Reinhardt through two and a half minutes. Well, this second half, again, a little bit more reminiscent of that first quarter, right? The Eagles turning them over, really pushing the intensity and really upping the pace in this one, forcing Chua McConnell into a few unforced errors, a few errant passes, and making it very difficult for them. And then for Reinhardt, you have to like what you're seeing because they're able to push the pace and get into their looks and play with a tempo that very few teams in the nation can match. As much credit as we gave Chua McConnell for finding a way to battle back in that second quarter, you have to give Reinhardt credit for having an answer here in the third. And that's a third second half turnover for Chua McConnell. It's just been very difficult for them to keep the ball in this one. Tough sledding is an understatement. It's been really hard for the Bears to get opportunities to score the basketball at all. Reinhardt along the wing. Sanchez Ponce wants to go inside instead to Gibson. Gibson through traffic, loses the ball. Casey Williams of the Orange handed off to Smith. Smith stops on the wing, back to her. To the corner. 
Kelly drives, floated out front and taken by Maria Sanchez Ponce. Back door to Kraft, who's able to keep possession in the corner. She drives on the mid post outside to Gibson. Gibson to the corner. Kiara Simpson drives, floated across to Sanchez Ponce. Ty Williams wants a bucket, working with the basketball. Sanchez Ponce lets it fly and nails the three ball. Sanchez Ponce again knocking down the three ball, the 44% three point shooter, hitting her third of the night. Definitely a capable shooter for the Eagles. And you can just feel that energy start to wane from the Bears. They were playing with so much fire and passion in that second quarter and Reinhardt going on one of their trademark runs you could feel it just kind of sucking the air out of the true McConnell Bears team Ty Williams drives kicked outside Simpson up to Gibson she wanted that deep three Williams takes one from the wing and she gets it back to back three balls for Reinhardt University they are hot in this second half they are hot like fire really making it Difficult for Troy McConnell and another turnover for the Bears. That's five turnovers here, and it hasn't even been five minutes into the third quarter. Sanchez Ponce coming off the floor, Townley into the game. Reinhardt will run the floor. This is Ty Williams with the basketball alongside Urs Gibson. Williams, the graduate student from Macon, Georgia, averaging eight points per game, four rebounds, two assists. She goes to Townley, down to the corner. Reinhardt on the drive. Blaylock floated it to Gibson. She takes it herself and gets this with a little kiss off the glass. Absolutely, Tara Gibson with a nice move to get into the paint. And you feel like this is a bit of a course correction for Reinhardt. They had a few great looks in that second quarter that just did not fall, but those looks are falling here in the third. Speaking of looks, following the senior from Covington, Dobbs gets one. Good look for her, love to see that. She's been a consistent contributor this year for the Bears, really important piece for Truett McConnell, 11 points per game. Boarded carefully by Lovejoy and kept away from Gibson. Smith knifes her way inside. Too much heat, she resets and tries again, now stolen by Simpson. What a nifty grab. Absolutely, and another turnover for Truett McConnell. They have not been able to hold on to the ball. Anytime you turn the ball over six times within the first six minutes of the quarter, that spells bad things for your team. Bears gonna have to go down to the far end of the floor and put this back on. Truett McConnell through traffic. It's Chloe Williams up top on the straightaway Lovejoy. Given off to Brewster from the elbow. She goes up top. Townley playing that shutdown defense. To the corner. Here's three for the Bears, and it's off the mark. True freshman Simpson with a board. Gives it off to Blaylock. Two true freshmen running the backcourt. She drives off the glass. This goes for Reinhardt. And when it rains, it pours so far for the Eagles, up 50 to 19. It was 33 to 17 at halftime. Reinhardt University can do no wrong in this third period of play. It's been all Eagles. I do like to see Brewster be aggressive there. Again, unable to get a field goal so far in this game. She has two points that came from the line, but a good thing for her and a good thing for Bears fans. She's remaining aggressive and trying to put her imprint on this game and cut this deficit a little bit for Chua McConnell. First one rattles around and won't go for Brewster. Thirty-one points separate these two. Make it thirty. Brewster gets one back at the line. Trude McConnell back in a defensive shell. Yeah. 
Simpson pulls up, and that clatters in off the glass. Are you kidding me? Do you think she called bank on that one? Man, she must have. She called <laughs> something. True McConnell driving inside, loses the ball. It's a 33-point game, 53 points right now for the Eagles of Reinhardt University. True McConnell on average allows 72 points per game. They've scored 900 entering tonight. In all other games combined, 15 played. Four and six in the Appalachian Athletic Conference. Two teams that are seemingly headed in opposite directions. The great year that Reinhardt has had, paired with the struggles that Truett McConnell has had so far this year. But things can change quickly throughout games, so you have to give Reinhardt a lot of credit for not taking things lightly on Truett McConnell in this one, especially when it looked like the Bears were going to find their way back into this one after a strong second quarter. Nice entry pass. Williams back door to Simpson, who gets it to go. And that is a truly unselfish play from the Eagles, a team that is averaging 15 assists a game, and you see why they're passing up a good shot for a great shot. Bears over to Brewster, stolen by Gibson. She keeps it on the floor. Playlock through the center of the court, close side to another true freshman. Three true freshmen along the arc, and this one takes the three. Swatted at in the air, near the baseline, stays alive. Simpson over to Williams. Williams takes her time, didn't want to shoot too quickly. 15 on the clock. And another hustle play there for the Eagles. Again, that activity level paramount in this one. Williams stops on the elbow and takes an extra step, so this will go back to the Bears of Truett McConnell. And that's something that is just so exhausting to continue to play against, a team that is the first to every loose ball, the first to every offensive rebound. All those 50-50 opportunities seemingly going Reinhardt's way in this quarter. And that's why they have the big lead that they do. Brewster. From the corner, goes outside, there's the three, and this one goes. Truett McConnell gets one back. Nice look for TMU's Bears. Good shot for them trying to take the lid off the basket and make some headway into this lead. Forked up by Blaylock and gathered by the Bears. A three on their last trip up the floor. This season, 28.2% from long range, so they've really struggled to shoot threes all year long. Simpson walking this up to the line to Williams. 90 seconds left in this third period. A 31 point game. Gibson drives around Brewster and the foul. Gibson will go to the stripe. Bit of an errant pass there from the ref. Getting a glance there from Gibson. One seventeen left in this third period. And again, the score of this one at halftime was 33 to 17. So to see this kind of lead that Reinhardt has built up, you definitely can see why they are looked at as one of the better teams, not only in the Appalachian Athletic Conference, but in the nation as well. Right away the whistle. Stolen away by Gibson, not gonna let her take it. But if I'm a coach, that's a foul that I can live with, because again, that just shows activity, that shows passion, that shows effort, and that shows determination. Really trying to make things hard on the Bears. Brewster gets that to go.
Back to the offensive end of the floor. Naya Moon leads the way and stolen away by Kelly and the Bears. Moon, the only player she had to beat. Ton of contact down to the low post. And a tremendous defensive play there from Moon. Even though she may be the smallest player on the floor for Reinhardt, she has taken the cue from the rest of the players on the team, not giving up on the possession and getting the block. Kelly gets the lid off the basket. That was her sixth shot tonight. Now one for six from the floor for two. Waylock leads the way, the hand up to Moon. Moon also scoreless. Steps back to the wing and fed to Williams. Williams loses the ball for a moment. Reinhardt University, eight seconds on the shot clock, 22 in the quarter. Williams has got room into the lane, shots off the mark, and right away, Tony Campbell wants the call, the official makes it. A lot of contact there and a late whistle. Almost thought that the ref wasn't going to make the call on that when it was such a late whistle. Coach Campbell almost jumping onto the floor after a near no call there. Ty Williams two for six tonight. Both shots he, she has hit from long range. Six points, now seven. That's her first trip to the line. She's one for one. Five rebounds, six assists to go along with that stat line. Really great night for her. Absolutely making some great plays on both ends of the floor. An all-around effort for her in this one. Smith stops quickly. Now she'll take it inside and a lot of contact. Tria Blaylock able to slow her down. She'll send her to the line. And that was one of the better moves of the night that we've seen from Troy McConnell. And what made it so good was the fact that they were able to get two feet into the painted area, something that they have not had a lot of so far in this game. A lot of passing along the perimeter, getting the ball in the high post, but they have just not been able to get many clean paint touches right there. A nice attempt there is Smith trying to do it herself. That one easily knocked home. Blaylock running the floor. She's got Gibson. Gibson from the elbow fires a shot, and that'll do it for our third period of action. After two periods, it is all Reinhardt University Eagles. I mean, they have been unstoppable. 59-28, Reinhardt. Lorenzo, any thoughts on what to expect in the fourth period at this point? Well, if I'm Ryan Hart, maybe looking to get a few of the players who don't really play as much into the game a little bit, see if they can get some experience now, leading by 31 points. Of course, you're not taking anyone lightly, but you do want to be able to build out your depth because you will need it as this season goes on. Anything can happen, so the more players that you have that are confident in being able to play, the better your team will be going into March. And we'll look back at what we saw at the beginning of tonight's contest. First, the Bears, 4-11 overall, 2-4 and four on the road. So obviously already an intimidating situation for this program. TMU has to take a road trip for all the teams in the conference that you could have to play. This is the worst place to come and play in the Appalachian Athletic Conference. On the other side of the ball, Reinhardt University, 14-0 overall, obviously undefeated at home as well, 46% from the floor this season, averaging 83 points per game. Right now they've got 59. They're shooting 41% from the floor, including 46% from range. Think about that. Reinhardt gives this off to Naya Moon, back across the floor. Simpson drives, loses it. Brewster nearly had the ball, stays alive near the baseline. Kelly with the board. Smith to the far end. Kate Reed fires, this rattles around and finds the twine. And a 
if you're true on McConnell, of course, there are no moral victories in sports. It's either a win or a loss, but you do want to be able to see if you can build some momentum going into your next game. Seeing a few go down will definitely do the trick as you get ready to continue your season and try to get things back on track. Smith streaks up the floor for the wide open layup. 59-32, a great play, but it could be too late. It would basically be a miracle at this point. Obviously still very much possible for TMU to come back and win this game, but it would double their scoring total. Miracles do happen, but again, the focus should be more on taking it one possession at a time and just playing good basketball. Quick shot as the shot clock expires. Brewster gets the board. Wild to see her with only four points in a conference game. Especially with the kind of season that she's had, averaging nearly 17 points a game. That's got to be some Tony Campbell cooking right there, right? He's, he came in with a game plan and said, I know how to slow her down. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and you could tell that their forwards are doing a really good job of fronting her, making it really difficult for her to get the ball clean in the post and kind of mucking the game up and getting her uncomfortable. Definitely a great coaching job from Coach Campbell in this one. Reinhardt back to the defensive end of the hardwood. Kelly way out beyond the wing to Brewster. Look how far out Brewster is catching the ball, catching it nearly on the elbow. She's so used to getting that ball on the block, making two dribbles and getting a quick move towards the basket. But Reinhardt has done such a good job of pushing her outside of her comfort zone in this one. Simpson with a move. Nice her way inside off the glass. Too much. Basketball escapes the floor, and so this will go back to the Bears. If you're a fan of Troy McConnor, you're happy to see that Reinhardt hasn't scored so far in the first two and a half minutes of this quarter, right? The only problem, you began the quarter down 30. So you have to put some points on the board of your own if you're going to make this a more competitive basketball game. Reinhardt this season, nearly 39 rebounds per game, 38.7, 16 assists per game. They're averaging 12 and a half steals per game. How crazy is that? It's just a testament to the type of basketball that they play. So active, so ferocious, just all over the floor. All five people at all times just seem to be able to either play down low defensively or on the perimeter and make things very difficult for the opposing team. Off the mark, tally remains 59-32. Lovejoy takes her second, this goes. Eagles to the offensive end, three minutes gone in this final period. Williams to Moon. Carries it. Top of the post and then flipped outside. Tria over to Williams and she has too much. Boarded by Kate Reed and then the floor run by Smith. Backdoor feed, Dobbs off the glass, too much. And how many times have we seen that from Troy McConnell in this game? A point blank look, unable to fall. Well, I didn't catch it until you pointed it out specifically, but Sometime in the second period, you pointed out, you know, they're running and gunning a lot, and they are. They, they run up the floor, they take quick looks. The first look they have, which sometimes that works, but clearly not working tonight. And it's just such a night and day difference compared to what you see for Reinhardt, right? More often than not, they're passing the ball around, and even if someone has a good look, they're going to be quick to make that extra pass to get a great look, so... Definitely a credit to the Eagles for the way that they've been able to play. Great feed over the top of Townley and dropped home by Lovejoy. That was a great bucket. And a great pass there from Dobbs. She's really given some great minutes for Troy McConnell off the bench in this one. Even if it hasn't been her most efficient outing, she has just been a bundle of energy for the Bears so far in this one. 
Sydney Smith back to her feet to Lovejoy, and it's broken up by Nia Moon. Moon has just got this great aggressive play style. It's really fun to watch her play on both ends of the floor. And even though it seems like she hasn't scored at all in this game, but her impact has been felt. She's been very quick to lose ball. She's been very, very good defensively. She's showing herself to be a key rotation player. Even if her shot isn't falling, she's someone that you have to have on the floor because of how difficult she makes things for the other team. She's been a big contributor offensively this season, obviously still making the big plays tonight on the defensive end of the floor, but on the offensive end this year, six and a half points per game. 91% at the stripe, 33% from long range, 37% from the floor. Big contributions for her all year long. And the best part about all of that, just a freshman. Just a freshman. True freshman, which at any level of college basketball, to have a true freshman that comes in and makes big, splashy plays like that, not only are you excited about it, it's, it's really unusual. Moon outside to Blaylock, entry pass. Marley battling with Dobbs. And the whistle as she takes the shot, so she'll head to the line. She's been a very physical presence so far in this game, unafraid to bang down low and kind of take a little bit out of those bare forwards. Taking a look at the NAI top 25. Before the break, number one was Dort, 12-0, 588 points. Right behind them, Indiana Wesleyan, Campbellsville third, Clark, and then Carroll in fifth. Marion was sixth, Lewis Clark State out of Idaho seventh. Briar Cliff out of Iowa eighth. Georgetown in Kentucky, conference foe ninth. And tenth was Vanguard, followed by Concordia, Rocky Mountain, Dakota State, Rio Grande, and Cumberlands. Reinhardt University number 26. The way the Eagles have looked so far this year, you do have to like their chances against any team in the country. Undefeated so far overall and in conference play. Obviously, they feel like they're one of the better teams in the country. I have a funny feeling this could be a long ride for Reinhardt University's Eagles. I'm really interested to see how the season is going to shake out for Georgetown as well. But I know that this is something that the coaching staff for the Eagles, they definitely harped on a little bit. The phenomenal start that Reinhardt had in conference play just a season ago. They started off 14-0 in conference play, the best start in school history, but then finished 3-7 and ended up losing in the first round of the conference tournament. So you definitely do not want to have a repeat of that. You want to be able to build off of that strong start, and hopefully that could be a springboard into some better things for your team the deeper the season goes. Inbounding pass for Truett McConnell. Lost by Lovejoy, ball still on the floor. Picked up somehow by TMU as the whistle sounds. 4.32 left to play, 62-36. Reinhardt University a commanding lead against the Bears of Truett McConnell University. Thanks for being with us, Southeast Sports Network College Basketball. Reinhardt University hosting Truett McConnell as Tria pulls up for the three and Blaylock can't knock it down. Stewart, far side of the floor. Here's a three for Lovejoy, short. Nia Moon gets the lid off the basket with a nice three. And her hitting a shot is definitely something that you would like to see and a well-deserved make there for Nia Moon. She's done all of the little things since she's been on the floor, so it's nice to see her get on the board and get into the scorebook with a three. Last time out, a loss for Truett McConnell against Johnson. That's who Reinhardt's going to play on Saturday. We'll have that as well here on the Southeast Sports Network. Be sure to tune in. Would love to have you along for the ride and our broadcast of that game. Going to be a great matchup between those two programs. A rematch. They've already played once at Johnson University earlier this season. Right now we've got... Truett McConnell's Bears on the road battling the Eagles of Reinhardt University. Town lay down inside. 
There's the layup, and it goes the little kiss off the glass, and you can hear the crowd fired up about that. Yes, and she has just been such a force down low for the Eagles so far in this game. It just seems like she's playing with a level of force and intensity that Chua McConnell's bigs have been unable to match. She has given the Eagles some great minutes off the bench so far in this game. Just her physicality and effort making things so difficult down low. Rattle South 67-36 remains the tally. Really all Reinhardt. Here come the Bears to respond. So while Reinhardt stays at home and hosts Johnson on Saturday, Truett McConnell remains on the road. They've got two more road games coming up on Saturday at Kentucky Christian. Hold that thought as Townley takes it again off of the glass. This time blown dead before she can get the shot off. And I'm not quite sure about that call. It seemed like she only took two steps, but again, like I said earlier, the ref is always right. How'd she score that bucket? Did you see that? I, I, a little bit of wizardry <laughs> and poetry in motion there. I'm not exactly sure what happened. True, and McConnell would have had a little bit more of that. And this would have been a different ball game. Townley far side, couple of passes. Reinhardt University served up for Moon. She pulls up for another three. This time there's too much sauce on it. But again, Reinhardt first to the 50-50 ball. Just, that has been just such a determining factor of this game. Good pass down inside. And another bucket for Marley Townley, who's having a big night. And again, second chance points for the Eagles. Townley climbing up the scoring total, stuffing her stat sheet a little bit. Bears backdoor feed and the foul right away. Good look, she had a wide open chance and there was nothing that could be done by Keith other than just taking the foul. But sometimes those are good fouls to take, right? You don't want to give up easy looks, especially to a team like Chua McConnell that has struggled to score the basketball. You want to continue to put that pressure on them. Even late in the game, you don't want to give up anything easy. You want to make them have to work for everything that they get. Two minutes left to play. And then it turned out to be a good foul. Taking a look at our leading scorers, first the Bears, nine points for Dobbs, six for Lovejoy, five for Kate Reed, five for Queen, four for Stewart and Brewster. Brewster over for four tonight, four for six at the line. One rebound, one, one assist to go with that. Probably the best stat line is Dobbs, four for 14. One for one at the line, five rebounds, one assist to go with their nine points. And the main part of this game that will never be forgotten, of course, at least Dobbs, not very efficient in this one, but that personal 5-0 run that she went on in that second quarter, to really give Truett McConnell a chance. Unfortunately, they were unable to capitalize off of that momentum, but you could tell that Elise Dobbs came into this game with a, a mission to bring energy and fire off the bench, and she did just that for Truett McConnell. Stewart across the floor over to Queen. Defended by Williams. On the elbow, now to the corner. Here's the three. This takes a big high bounce, fighting for it. TMU comes up with the ball for a moment, but Blaylock with a steal. Naya Moon can't keep it through traffic. A scramble for the basketball. Somehow Reinhardt's Keith gets it and takes a shot. Boarded by Williams, outside to Simpson, and stolen away by the Bears of Truett McConnell. And I know that Reinhardt was unable to come away with points on that possession. But that was just a microcosm of what we've seen so far in this game. A loose ball, and who was the first to it? Ryan Hart, specifically Nia Moon. And that has been something that we have seen time and time again in this contest. It's what's made Ryan Hart be able to have a 31-point lead here in the fourth quarter, and it's also what has led Ryan Hart to their current standing of being undefeated. Are you Eagles working the offensive end? I want to give you the scoring leaders really quickly before we get to our wrap. 
Blaylock, 30 seconds left to play, 12 on the shot clock. Moon far side to Keith, drives from the wing. She stops at mid-range and fires. Too much on it as Williams gets the board. Another chance for Reinhardt. This takes a big high bounce and goes. Tria Blaylock gets one for the Eagles. 16 and a half seconds left to play. Three more second chance points there for the Eagles for good measure as they put a cap on what has been an absolutely fine performance here at home. Five seconds left to play as the whistle sounds. Scoring leaders tonight for Reinhardt University. She hasn't, I don't remember the last time I saw Maria Sanchez Ponce on the floor. She finished with 17, six for nine, three from beyond the arc, two for two at the line, six rebounds, two assists. That's the best stat line for Reinhardt. Ashley Woodruff finishes with 12 points, Ty Williams with 11, seven for both Townley and Simpson, six for Blaylock and Gibson. Ty Williams probably the second best stat line in the game, three for eight from the floor. All three shots from long range, two for two at the line, seven rebounds, eight assists. And Reinhardt will just burn up the clock. There you have it. A big victory as the Eagles, who are seeking to break into the top 25, rise to 15-0 on the season, 11-0 in the Appalachian Athletic Conference. Great matchup here today. A lot of fun to be along with you for the ride on the Southeast Sports Network and have you with us here from Brown Athletic Center. Your final thoughts on tonight's contest. In terms of the game, specifically that second half, we saw Reinhardt's activity take over. Even when they aren't hitting shots, they're so active. They're the first to lose balls again, the first to offensive rebounds. And that made things difficult for Chua and McConnell throughout this contest. Whenever they were able to force Reinhardt to miss a shot they were there for the offensive rebound and to capitalize with second chance points and then they were turning over to a mcconnell time and time again on the other end of the floor so activity and effort paramount for reinhardt as we've seen so far throughout this season 72 39 does a big time win like that in conference play does it do something for you if you're on the program for the eagles or is it just another win, just another check in the box? Of course it's another notch in your belt. You don't want to get too high, get too low. You want to stay even killed. But it is good to come away with a nice victory, 72-39. to 39. Such a dominant performance in front of your home crowd. Definitely helps build your confidence. And that's what they're going to need as this season goes on if they're going to want to make noise into the conference tournament and kind of avenge some of those demons of going one and done a season ago. Well, fantastic. Thanks again for being with me. We will have game number two. Be sure to tune in here on the Southeast Sports Network. It will also be available wherever you're tuned in right now, whether it's radio, television, or a live feed online. Just stay there. Go back to the main page of the channel. We'll be back with it. The boys playing next. We'll have all the action live, free, and in HD. For Reinhardt, our entire crew, Mr. Robinson, I'm Gabriel Shry saying so long from Aleska Jordan, where the final score is a 72-39 victory in favor of the Eagles. This has been College Basketball. All games and events airing on our networks are broadcast live in our copyright material. Today's game will be archived inside of the app or platform where you viewed it and available for replay. This has been a presentation of the Southeast Sports Network. Volleyball eight years after I played Division One in college. Saying yes to volleyball officiating will give you the privilege to be a part of one of the most exciting sports around. I'm a speaker, a builder, I coach, culinary arts, auditor, a firefighter. For anyone contemplating becoming a volleyball official, just go for it. Take the plunge, open the door. Say yes to officiating. Learn more about how to get involved at sayyestoofficiating.com. The rhythmic sound of more than 500 cascading waterfalls. The endless echo of more than 10,000 caves. The serene silence of a thousand miles of wilderness trails. The next time someone tells you to get lost, consider it an opportunity. Your vacation is now playing in Tennessee.
The Southeast Sports Network, your free ticket to front row sports action. From heart-pounding football showdowns to thrilling basketball games, experience every moment live. All from the comfort of your home. Your favorite athletes, broadcast in real time and on demand. It's not just streaming, it's your front row ticket to the best of Southeastern sports. And the best part? It's absolutely